Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Sweet Leaf by Black Sabbath. What a mega tune, this one. Fantastic for beginners if you're just getting started out on your power chord as well. You can use the two-finger power chord. All of the root notes are on the thicker string, so it's a real easy one to play. Lots of fun. I should point out that the original recording, the guitar was tuned down to C sharp, down a minor third. Now, if you're going to play that way, obviously all of the positions of all of the chords change. If you're a beginner, I wouldn't worry about that at all. If you're a big Black Sabbath fan, then you probably want to find a more detailed lesson on this song although I will be talking about how to play some of the later sections at least a, a bit of a look at those in standard tuning as well which for most people is probably what you're going to be playing this song in. I should also mention the sound here now if you've got a multi-effects unit and a choice of types of distortion you want to be using fuzz for this song it's a real kind of aggressive fuzzy sounding d type of distortion not just like an, a regular amp cranked up. Now I'm going to turn it off for the teaching thing. I'm just using the, the fuzz unit I'm using is the uh, vintage fuzz sound that's built into my Kemper profiler. I haven't gone out to town and used it. I've actually got a, a, a beautiful fuzz unit here, but because I don't have a real app set up, I just thought I'd grab the fuzz unit in the Kemper there. It's perfectly adequate. You know, I've got a definitely fuzzy sound. It's fuzzy. If I turn the fuzz off... You can hear I'm using a little bit of crunch. I'm just using a, a Fender Deluxe profile, actually. Probably should have used a Marshall. But you can hear with the fuzz. It gives you a lot of that sustain that you want for this sort of song. So you can just play that one chord. Still going. Now it's starting to die off a bit, but it's you know it's got a lot more sustain than if I turned it off and did the same thing. You know, there's nothing, there's no body there after just a, even a couple of seconds. So uh, using fuzz is what I'd recommend for you playing it. I'm going to leave it off for the lesson just to keep everything clear. I might dab it on from time to time, but it's worth having a bit of a play around with the sound there. This kind of song that the sound texture is going to be important and help you play along with the original recording as well, make it feel like it's the right sound. So the chords we need here are an A power chord, A5 power chord, first finger and the fifth fret of the thicker string. You can use your little finger, you could use your third finger, you could use a full three-fingered power chord, but I kind of feel like the two-note one sounds better in this tune. I'm not exactly sure why. I tend to use my first finger and my little finger when I'm doing a two-note power chord, but it's really whatever feels comfortable for you. First chord is A. You're going to do two down picks on that. Then you're going to slide your first finger up to the tenth fret and play this one. This is a D, and you're going to slide that down. You might find that a little difficult. If you do, you can play all of them. I feel like pick, slide it down to D flat, and then I play the C, and then slide it back up to the D again. So you end up with this. One and two and a three. struggling you could play all of them and go that's fine but I think it sounds cooler to have that slide play play slide one and two and a three four and getting the rhythm right is key here on yeah now I do know some doing this there's like a little bit of noise this kind of fuzz I'm just kind of moving my hand on the strings but it is adding to the sound Also, a little bit of vibrato there. I think on the original recording, because it's tuned down, the strings are very loose, so it's probably hardly moving, but it's making it sound like it's a wider vibrato. Second riff, A, G, C, E, A. So this is A at the fifth fret. G, first finger in the 
third fret. Beat four is a C, first finger in the eighth fret. E right up at the twelfth fret. And then on beat two back to the A. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There is a little bit more to this song. If you're a complete beginner, I would stick to enjoying playing those couple of riffs. But let me go through a few more of the finer points that you might want to check out as well. First one is a doubling of the melody. So if you want to get really heavy into it, playing the root note of the chord, but up an octave. So playing A, A, D, D flat, C. It's just here, it's the octave of this. But I think it's this. Now that only really works if you're a second guitar player. Just playing it on the one guitar it doesn't really sound good, although you could choose for the second verse to go to a full three-fingered power chord in which you would be getting that note as well. Particularly with fuzz, if you're playing all the notes together, it does sound different to when you're playing the notes by themselves. So I'm really talking at that point about layering. Now, after we've played through that a little bit, the song changes and we get into a guitar solo and a whole heap of crazy stuff, a great drum solo as well. I haven't learnt the solo for this song, so that's not something I'm going to cover in this lesson, but I do want to talk about the other parts in case you're a beginner with a little bit more ambition and you'd like to play along with the whole song. So after you've been through the main riff and the chorus a couple of times, we get to a point where we go to an A chord. The harmony is just an A5 power chord there, it could be there, it doesn't really matter. Uh, there's a little bit of crazy guitar going on, and then pretty soon we go to a bit where it goes to a B. To a C sharp. So B is at the 7th fret. C sharp is at the ninth fret. Now it stays on the C sharp. Now when it stays on the C sharp, there's a very iconic kind of little bit of riffage. There's beyond most beginners, but it's the first fret. Of course, it would be played a bit higher if you're in a different tuning, but first fret, second fret, first and second fingers, thinnest string. Then very quick, first fret, second fret, first fret, hammer on flick off with the second finger, and second finger going down, second fret on the second string. Now that's happening while we've got that C sharp chord. So while that lead guitar riff is going a bit crazy, the chords are going from a B to the C sharp, B on the and after four. So one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. The song gets crazier and crazier. It's worth remembering that Black Sabbath were not like a pop punk band. They were kind of a psychedelic metal band, I guess. So people call it doom metal or whatever. But back then it was just, they were experimenting. They were the forefront of creative music and they were using distortion, gain a lot of drugs and all that sort of stuff. But they, they were pushing boundaries here. So it wasn't like keep trying to keep things simple. They were do, moving through different sections, different keys. It was a very, you know, experimental, amazing music. Now, uh, the song kind of grows through a few different changes. We end up at a drum solo where the drums are going pretty crazy. There's a, a new riff that kind of enters, which is this. To C sharp, A, A flat, G. So, sorry, sorry out of the side there. That's the C sharp at the ninth fret, then fifth fret, fourth fret, third fret. Pick, slide, play. And then we're back to the riff. And as I suggested earlier, if you're a complete beginner, I would recommend sticking with those first couple of riffs and enjoy playing over the first chunk of the song. If you're a little bit more ambitious, have a listen. See if you can work your way through that other section where it goes from the B to the C sharp. See if you can check out the rhythm of those. Maybe have a look at exploring some improvising over the, that 
particular part it would be using the C sharp minor pentatonic predominantly if you're familiar with the minor pentatonic scale already then have a go at that second riff which is played over the drums see if you can keep yourself in time for that and then join back in as the riff emerges from the song it's a lot of fun it's a great song to play in a band as well if you want to get all uh, you know spaced out and trippy while you're playing it it's lots and lots of fun uh, I have jammed this song many many times in various guises over the years I really hope you enjoyed this one there are plenty more song suggestions if you're just getting into your power chords over on the website there'll be a link in the description if you happen to be on YouTube really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button slapping me a like and let me know in the comments what other psychedelic metal tunes you'd like me to check out and do lessons on I'll see you for plenty more very soon you'll take care of yourselves bye bye